So we're in a market right now where we absolutely want to have more listings. You guys want more listings? Okay. Do you want a little bit or a lot? A lot. And we're also in a market where taking listings has become somewhat more challenging than it has been in the past. And clearly, the woman that I'm going to bring up next, I'm going to just say one number, 98%. Everyone just say it for me. Ready? One, two, three. Turn to your partner and say it to them. Ready? One, two, three. Look up here. Tell me one more time. One, two, three. She has a 98% closing ratio on her listing presentation. Now that isn't, hold on. I mean, she goes on 100 listings and she takes 98 of them. And this isn't just with like her mom and the person who cuts her hair and her sister and her aunt and her uncle. These are the people that don't even know her. So I want you to imagine for a second what your business would experience if you had a 98% closing ratio on your listing presentation. Would you guys love that? Okay, so we're going tactical. We're going like, inspired over the last two and now straight tactics on 98%. So can we clap it up for Miss Eileen Machine Rivera. Wife, mother, cyclist, grandmother, coach, and CEO in chronological order. Okay, that's just, you know, um, I thought I knew a lot of you, but I'm looking at this room and I don't know a lot of you. So hi, <laughs> welcome. That's a little bit about me. Um, about six or seven years ago, I was behind the stage at another event with Tom, and I was talking to him about my conversion rate. I was really, I was so proud of myself, and I'm standing back there with Tom, and I said, I've tracked the last 26 listing appointments I went on. Now, by the way, that was over the course of a year. It was the previous 12 months. I tracked 26 of them, and I listed 24. Am I hot stuff or what, right? I'm telling him that backstage. And with that warm smile that we're all familiar with, and you know, his hand on my arm, he looks at me, he says, I am so proud of you. That's really good. And guess what? You're not going on enough listing appointments. Right? And it's your mother and the hairdresser and the friend from church and the kid from school and things like that. And it's like, okay, how, how does this man like build me up and then humble me? Like right in the same 30 seconds. It was very effective for me. Over the course of the next couple of years, didn't, didn't happen in six months, I was meticulous about tracking my listing numbers. And you got the art and science of the listing presentation, right? You know that's what we're going to talk about? Oh, okay, somebody say yes. yes. Becky, Mary, thank you. So my numbers were 168 listing appointments. I lost three of them. Two didn't list, and I took 163. I find that most people in this room to improve their listing presentation have to learn one of two things. They either have to learn to master the science of the listing presentation or they have to get better at the art of it. I, those of you who know me know this, like I'm a total artist, right? So I had to get better at the discipline and the mechanics and the data and how I presented. Some of you would benefit from getting a little bit better at the art. Right? So we, we all tend to have one strength or the other. Um, my goal at the listing presentation within the first 10 minutes or so is to tell them a little bit about myself, to articulate why I'm here, and to create some credibility. So I have to ask you, did I do that with you in my first three slides? I mean, it wasn't an accident, right, you guys? So think about it. I, I told you that I'm a grandma and all these other wonderful things. I told you my listing ratios. I told you why we're here. So one of the things, here's a, here's a great, great tip. It will help you so much all week while you're here. In addition to the content that Tom and Bill deliver and all of the other speakers, pay attention to how they do it. Pay attention to how they present because we're selling coaching, you know that, right? right? We're, I, I mean, we're selling coaching. To me, it's just a different kind of presentation. It's just a different listing presentation. And I don't know anybody better. 
and I just saw Josh somewhere. Where did I catch your face? Josh Rubin, there he is right there. Great listing agents, lots of other friends in the audience that are great listing agents. I don't think anybody's better than Tom. We should all be glad he's teaching us and not selling. Okay, so, so pay, pay attention to that. How is your opening on your listing presentation? There is no, no excuse that anyone in this room cannot master the science of the listing presentation. Okay, so to master the science, you, you need to have structure and you need to perfect that structure for you. So, so what's expert, okay, so expert. Let me, so setting the stage. This is a structure you need for a listing presentation. You need to know how to set the stage. What does that mean? From the moment you walk in the door to when you sit the table to how you tour the house, those are all things you have to figure out how to engage that consumer, right? How to start connecting. And you have to have more than one way to do it. I have, and my coaching clients know this, I have a list of hundreds and hundreds of questions, right? So to me, questions are critical. Because that's where, you, that's where you collect information on how they feel, what they want, what they expect, who else they're talking to, right? We may not be the only one. Questions are critical. Marketing. Please do not talk about your marketing at a listing presentation. Can, can you show them your marketing? Right? I, I've seen it happen over and over again. Oh, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. Or, um, oh, I put out a video for 123 uh, Main Street and it had 19,000 views. Are you seriously telling them that instead of showing them that? See, I, I, I get into the art, I can't help it. Um, CMA, for a, lot of, for a lot of sellers at any price point, the way some of us present the CMA is very overwhelming. You better break that stuff down. You better know how to present it depending on, you know, on the person's um, experience in selling real estate. Testimonials, recap, close, these are the basics. Master them, they're not hard. You have all the tools. Science plus discipline, discipline equals success. Let there be no doubt in your mind. You don't need to be an artist. You don't need to be fancy. You don't need to do pretty things. You don't need to be the marketing king or queen. If you master the science of the listing presentation and you have discipline, you will do really, really well in this business. Again, it's because I, I think he's, he's doing me a favor. I asked Josh to sit close so I could see him. My, my, my dear friend and fellow New Yorker, um, I like razzing him. I'm, I'm not going to get into his numbers, but my conversion rate is way better than his. <laughs> is way better than his. But guess what? He did 5.5 million last year. Way better than I did. <laughs> okay? So it's, you know, he's mastered, Josh has mastered discipline. Josh has mastered the science. Some of us keep trying to sprinkle a little artistry on him, but he doesn't need it. I also am going to razz him in front of thousands of people and say he's kind of behind on his goal this year. Probably going to get in trouble. Tom's his coach, in case you don't know that. He's a little behind. Then again, his goal is $11 million this year, and he's not that behind, right? So again, he is my, he is my poster child for science and discipline. You decide. You decide how you want to do, how, how you want to build your business, how you want to build your bank account. One of my favorite quotes ever, and I think it applies to this process, is master the rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist. Master the rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist. Too often, we try and break them before we've mastered them. Right? So when, when we as a company, when we as, as friends and colleagues talk about objection handling and sales edge and role playing and accountability, that's mastering the science. Don't dismiss it. Don't dismiss it. It's, got, it's an incredible, incredible payoff when you do that. But now, now we get to talk about my favorite part, the art the art of the listing presentation. I, as a coach, I've had the great honor to see hundreds of listing presentations. And here's a glimpse of a few of them. Um, 
all dear friends, dear friends, coaching clients, Nazar and Sergio and Mary and Glenda. I mean, I've seen all of these listing presentations and while they're beautiful books, like if you could sit here and just fan through the pages, beautiful, beautiful presentation and it touches on a lot of keys of the science of the process, right? They have their testimonials in there, they all have track record in there, they have examples in there. But as their coach, as their friend, I can tell you that all of those people, their conversion rate is what it is because of the art of the listing presentation. Because artists attract artists. So hence they coach with me. <laughs> um, the master has failed more times than the amateur has even tried. Please don't ever, and, and you'll hear that You'll hear that from the men and women sitting next to you. You'll hear it from Tom. You'll hear it from the stage. Don't ever, ever be embarrassed by any failure that you've had. Like, like check that, because I, I don't know anyone that hasn't had some, right? So just keep trying. Again, back to many of you and Mr. Rubin, I think of him with this. Science plus art equals conversion. I'm going to razz him a little bit to like add a little bit of art and prove that crappy conversion of his. 5.5 million. Don't let him throw anything at me, okay? Okay, so this is for me, this is what I teach my team who all list. This is what I've taught a lot of my coaching clients. This next slide is probably one of my favorites because it's where science meets artistry. So these are literally um, like flashcards that you use with your third grader that I use to practice the listing presentation. Because while it's all the components, the point of me showing it to you in this manner is the artistry is when pick any card and if that's where your prospect starts, that's where you meet them. You don't become so rigid that it's, oh, we'll get to that, or you put them off. Oh, I'm gonna go over everything, right? The artistry is the ability to meet someone where they are and then take the lead, right? Don't just be connected to your process, no matter how good it is. More artistry. Open with a close. Rapport, mastering the disc, showing them, don't tell them, pace and pattern interrupt. Let me tell you about all of these. Real quick, open with a close. You should, you should all, everyone sitting here that goes on listing appointments should write six of their own custom sentences of open with a close. My favorite example is uh, my team, my admin, you know, we schedule a listing appointment, it's actually someone I've never met. Maybe I make a confirmation call, maybe not, but I have no inherent advantage. And they open the door, and I, as I'm extending my hand, hi Debbie, thank you so much for having me over. And they're greeting me, and I say, Debbie, I'm so excited about selling your home. Should we sign the contract, or would you like to show me the house first? It's, it's silly, it's fun, it's disarming. In front, and, the, and guess what? You will know more in that 60 second interaction as to where that person is than, than most people learn in 40 minutes. Not always, not with everyone, and not just my line. You have to develop your own. Rapport. Um, I, I know you all know the implications and the value of rapport. I would suggest that you study it, that you dive into it more, that you practice it. I remember, gosh, probably 15 years ago working with, um, with who was my long, many, many, many year coach, Debbie Holloway, we would go out for lunch at an event and she'd have me practice with the waiter or the waitress because the very, very basics of rapport building, very basics, if you never do anything else, is rate of speech and volume. And as a very loud, fast-talking New Yorker, Debbie had to work with me for years, right? To slow down, to slow down, not be too loud, not be too fast, now, when I'm with my people, it works really well, right? Then it's just really natural. But you have to master the art of rapport. The disc. Who would rate themselves? 
On a scale of one to 10, who would give themselves at least a seven in their knowledge of the disc? Can I see, please? Okay. Lots of coaching clients, lots of seven or better. Know, know the foundation and the basics of it the way you know three plus three is six. Like it needs to be that simple, take the mystery out of it, learn it, understand it. Then I want you to take it one step higher and become really good at identifying each personality type's fear. Okay, this is artistry. When you are at a listing presentation, and we have, we, we have successful agents, D-I-S-C, right? It's not, there's only, they're not only one type. No matter who you are, you can do really well in this business. But if you're a high expressive or an amiable and you're at a listing appointment with someone that's an over the top driver, like really, you know, well, I'll leave it at driver. You all understand what that means, right? <laughs> Sometimes you have trouble. If you start to equate that the innate fear of a driver is to be taken advantage of, that's what they're worried about. If they're resisting you and you go to that place of compassion, wow, this really successful executive, partner, attorney, doctor, man or woman with those, with those titles is really like, they're kind of rude and they're so impatient. Oh, they're really afraid that I'm gonna take advantage of them. They're really afraid that I'm gonna be just a salesperson, right? If you get in your head that we all have fear, including the drivers, and that it's being taken advantage of, it, that one thing is a breakthrough. If you know it with all the personality types, you have more breakthroughs. Quick personal story, because I'm in the business like all of you. Um, I used to, and, and it, oh, talk about vulnerability. I think she's in the back of the room somewhere. I have a wonderful personal assistant. And I used to come in sometimes to the office, and like it was like the, the, the girls, the ladies were always chit-chatting, and it was making me crazy. And one day I said something to my husband. And he's like, what are you talking about? They're not clock punchers, right? You know, these, these women, the one in particular, I don't know if Sandy wants me to mention her name or not. Um, <laughs> you know, he's like, she, she, she takes care of you. Like she would do anything for you. She's, she really is like your little sister. And you're annoyed because they're chit chatting when you come in in the morning. They're not, they're not clock punchers, okay? I'm not making excuses for the people that are. I'm saying, look at what your innate fear is, look at what your prospect's innate fear is, and know that understanding that is an art. It is an art that will help you with conversion. So I just had to reframe my story. And when I go in the office and they're chit-chatting, which still happens from time to time, I think, they love me, they do anything for me, they're really smart and they work hard, right? Different experience, same thing happens with your client when you reframe. Okay, show them, don't tell them, pace and pattern interrupt. Deb, is it okay if I take my shoes off? Where is she? She's kind of the boss. Does anybody mind taking my shoes off? Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you, everybody. All right, so tell them, don't show them. When you're talking about your marketing, make sure you have examples of that marketing. When you're telling them that you sell more homes in the neighborhood than anybody else, could you please put evidence of that in front of them? Right? I have been showing my standings in my city since I was number 10. In the last few years, I ranked between one and three for the city. I've been showing that a listing presentation since I was 10 because I say, Joe, you mentioned you're interviewing three agents. I want to make sure that you're interviewing agents that are in the top 10 in the city. I don't shy away from the objection. That's part of my artistry. I don't like guessing. I don't like wondering. I don't shy away from the objections. I don't shy away from the questions. Okay. Show them. Do oh. Okay, we got that. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to give you three examples. I am so incredibly blessed to work with some really phenomenal agents on my team. Most of them list, I know that's unusual, most of them um, work as buyer's agents, but they've moved more and more into the listing side because we attract who we are. 
not what we want. We attract who we are, and this is what I've attracted, and they're very talented. One of them recently went to meet with a potential seller three times. And the fourth time was going with contracts, and he said, okay, I like, I like to have him refer to me as the old wise one. So he's like, okay, I need that old wise one thing. You know, I think it's gonna make the difference. Can you come with me? And I went, and we get to the door, and this gentleman opens the door, and we had an expectation of taking a listing. You know, he just he wanted some backup, and that's what teams do. And he opened the door, and Zach is introducing me, and again, like I start, you know, the hand right at the door, and I kicked my shoes off. That's what made me think of the shoes. I kicked my shoes off, and Zach went, oh, I'm sorry, do you want me to take my shoes off? And the seller, that was his fourth time there. And the seller said, oh, sure, that'd be great. I noticed that he had slippers on. He's Japanese. He has a pile of shoes at the front door. I didn't wait to be invited into rapport. I created rapport. Okay, the art, the art of the listing appointment. Another agent on my team, Nikki, same scenario, you know, chasing, chasing, calls me in. Um, we get there and we are going the foyer, living rooms over here, bedrooms are over there, we're kind of in the dining room and kitchens over there. We're chit-chatting and her prospect, Eve, said to both of us, and, and I've, got my, I've got my stuff, right, my briefcase and my marketing and I was pulling out all the stops for this one because this one I wasn't sure about. And she said, would you like to sit at the dining room table or at the kitchen table? Do you like want to see the house first? And I said, I'd really like to sit at the kitchen table. And that's where we put our things down and then went through the process. Later on, Nikki asked me, because you always debrief, I'm going to tell you this later, but you're hearing it now. Always, always after your listing presentations, all of them debrief with yourself even. Like in your iPhones, on paper, what did you do right? What did you do wrong? What could you have done better? Because you learn from your mistakes and you learn from your wins. And do not be complacent and do not take it for granted because it's your 60th listing this year. Congratulations, I'm proud of you. Like Tom said to me, still not enough. If you took 60, let's take 100. So debrief. So she and I are debriefing. She's like, I'm really surprised that you wanted to sit at the kitchen table. Because this woman was obviously very proud of her dining room, like it was just beautiful. And we were in the dining room and that's where she stopped. But I know from 23 years of experience and because I'm an artist, that company sits at the dining room and family sits at the kitchen table. And there was no question that the intimacy, intimacy that, that was created and the rapport building that was created because there was four of us at a little round table absolutely helped us leave with a, with a sign listing that day. So debrief, debrief. Jonathan and Amy, you're gonna see a picture of them in a little bit. I went and met with them at a list, to, listing. That, oh, we think we're ready to list our house. We, you, you see your signs, blah, blah, blah. And I get there and I start doing my thing, right? Like I'm the authority, I know what's best, I'm gonna protect you. So we're talking about the two college kids who are getting ready to leave, how their stuff needs to be boxed up, how things need to be thinned out. A coat of paint would not hurt, right? I mean, this, was a, this, was a, this is a family with four kids in the throes of it. And I could see that they were getting overwhelmed. And I backed off and I said, tell me what you want. Ideally, how would the situation happen? And they asked about the market and we decided we'd wait till September. This was back in May or June because they just, it was too overwhelming for them. I'm not that person, as, as much as I'm proud of my ratios, it's not about me. It's not about me, it's about the client, what they need. I'm the expert in what we do. I didn't push for a contract, okay? It worked out. Right? It worked out. They wound up doing business with us, but in that moment, that, that wasn't the thing to do. Um, if you'd like, I'll ask Tom if we can put these up on the pages. 
These are my worksheets that I do for the disc, right? We're still, I'm still going through all those bullet points. If you'd like them, I'll ask him if we can post them. The best, yes, yes. Okay, so, so the neat thing that I came up with this is not only that I added the fear to all of them, but again, you yourself, and if you run a team, it is critical that they fill out the five, the five who I know personally that's a driver, who I know personally who I, that, that's an expressive, you know, a C, the whole thing. Because again, if you're struggling and you're like, oh my God, this person won't shut up. They're driving me crazy. I want to stay on business. And you've done the exercise and you realize, you know what? My cousin Bobby, he's like that. He's such a talker, but he's a really good guy. And he, and he would trust me, and this person's gonna trust me, right? So again, you have to reframe. You do not realize how often you're in judgment when it comes to resistance and personalities. If you can equate every personality type with people that you know personally, as well as then professionally or public um, figures, conversion, artistry, trust me, please. Here's an example of show them, don't tell them. I know a lot of you brag about your open houses. I think I've been bragging about mine longer, right? I mean, I, we've been doing mega open houses since 2009. Not great timing. <laughs> but I don't talk about my open houses and not show them a visual of what our open houses look like and how they're different. Our open house invitations, many of my colleagues in the, on the coaching side um, it, it took them a moment to convince them about this next one. My open house invitations don't look like real estate stuff. My clients always comment on that and my turnout's always better. Now my eight agent friends in, in the audience that I see that work Long Beach, there you go. <laughs> because it works better, it's more effective. I'd rather do all the business with the eight of them that are here, by the way. So, have at it, R&D. Um, show them, show them how it's different. Tie the party in to the invitations. Hi, Randy. <laughs> um, did you see the part where I talked about pace and pattern interrupt at the listing appointment? Pace and pattern interrupt at the listing appointment can be as easy as, Christoph, um, would you mind if I get a glass of water? Right, that's just sometimes there's something going on and you have to regroup and you need just a second. Christoph, may I have a glass of water? Um, Christy, I forgot something in the car. I, that, not, I don't say I forgot, actually. I say, Christy, I have something in the car that I think you'd really like to see. Again, you have to make up your own, but pacing a listing appointment, sometimes it's pacing it to shorten it. Sometimes it's pacing it, oh, I'm getting flashed at, well, who's surprised? <laughs> um, for a pattern interrupt. So am I taking my shoes off? And this fabulous photo is my pattern interrupt. Those are, those are my nine grandkids. Okay, I know they're gonna give me three more minutes, so now I, got, now I gotta get the New Yorker out. So, hope it works. Exceed expectations, figure out what that means. That one's, you know, it's pay attention to your clients and exceed ex expectation. Burden of responsibility for me is huge. I have people in this room that have said to me, I, I lost a listing over price. This is where artistry comes in, okay? Your burden of responsibility is to do what you say you're gonna do, to be able to help them interpret the data you put in front of them, to be a local expert, to know how to prep a home for sale, your burden of responsibility is all of those things, and I expect anyone associated with us to execute on them perfectly, right? But do you think you decide the price of the house that you're gonna list it for? Because I've got news for you, it's not your house. It's not, that's not your decision. You can advise, but please never, never lose another listing over price. That burden is on the seller, and if you incorporate the artistry with the science, you will never lose one again for that reason. IUE, I teach my team all the time. Use the word I when you're taking responsibility. 
If it's a call and I say, James, I'm so sorry, I'm running about 10 minutes late, okay? You, it's like, oh my gosh, Lori, you did such a great job prepping the house. And we is when you're leading. It's a very small subtlety. If you incorporate it again, it's the artistry, right? Think about true great art. It's the shading, right? It's the nuances. Um, buyer profiling and behavioral economics. Uh, raise your hands if you feel that you articulate that well at the listing appointment. Okay, so there you go. Guess what? You, uh, uh, one more time. Raise your hand high and don't, don't change your answers. Raise your ha hands high if you feel that you articulate that well at the listing appointment. Which means if we have those few hands up in this room, imagine how you're gonna blow away your competition at the listing appointment. If you, leave, if you leave your time with me with nothing else but deciding to perfect that conversation, and you can catch me later and we can talk some more about it. Um, I love this quote, by the way. Master the rules like a pro so that you can break them like an artist. Isn't that cool? That was Picasso. I'm not getting off stage unless Tom sticks one of those hooks out. He told me I would do this. Um, science, science, again, scripts, objection handling, you have to do that. You have to go through all of those things. Talked about the arts. Okay, this couple right here, so this is some of my artistry and I am gonna go through this pretty quickly. They listed their house with me they called me the next day crying. They said they needed to cancel their listing. I said, so you've decided not to sell the house? They said, no, we decided to sell the house with Cindy. I'm sorry, excuse me? Uh, and she's crying. She says, you can't imagine the pressure we're getting when our family found out that we listed with you and not with our aunt. At the time, Cindy, who will leave at Cindy, was a top producing agent in my market. Okay, I know that I could have held them to that contract. This woman was distraught and selling her house so that they could regroup financially. I let them out of their contract. Okay, so I did zero listings with them. Except when they regrouped and bought their house, they bought their house through us and they referred us about $4 million worth of business. So sometimes the artistry is just doing the right thing, right? Don't let anybody hold you hostage. Don't roll, you know, don't roll over, don't be weak. But sometimes it's just the right thing. I learned a lot from these people because when, when they, 10 deals ago, 15 years ago, and 10 deals, when they first hired me, I was surprised that they hired me. When I called them afterwards and recapped and said thank you again and asked them why, they said to me, oh my gosh, we're glad we just finally have a choice in the neighborhood and that we don't have to just work with so-and-so. You finally have a choice? You thought you could only work with the neighborhood realtor? Like, he's a CPA, she's a CFO. If you don't ask the questions, if you don't learn from your wins, just like you learn from your losses, you're missing an opportunity. We've since done 10 transactions with them. Science plus art, plus discipline equals security with that big dollar sign. So go for all three. Another case study. Um, young man on the right, Danny, love him dearly, knew him since he was in grade school, um, bought his first condo with a member of my team, someone who's very close to me, then called me to sell his condo because he had met Greg and was gonna move into Greg's condo. Then we sold Greg's condo and so on and so on and so on. We've closed eight transactions with these gentlemen. Um, and Danny just got his license and is joining my team. So, so pretty cool. So here's a couple artistry. N yes, no, not now, maybe. They were so nice, but they, I, could, I wasn't gonna be the one to put pressure on them. Okay, I couldn't do it, but at Danny and Greg's last listing that we sold, we had 220 people come through that weekend. We had, I don't know, 10, 11 offers. It's been a couple months now. 
and I met somebody that I thought would be the perfect buyers for these people's house, the ones that didn't want to have to paint and pack and worry about the kids in school. So I went back to them and I said, this is the situation. We have this many backup offers. I think there's only two potential that might work for your house. Do you want to sign a one-party show? Well, how much do we have to do? I said, I don't want you to do anything because I want them to know these buyers, potential buyers, that I'm telling them the truth, that you're really not ready to sell. The house isn't prepped, we're not ready. I just want to tell everybody the truth and put the pieces of the puzzle together. So the house was a mess, the dogs were everywhere, the kids were everywhere. They wrote a full price top, I mean, on, the, on, on their property. So we did wind up listing their house, selling their house, even though 10 days earlier they were unsure. Right? But again, don't walk away from these situations feeling a loss. Be an artist, find the win, keep staying engaged. And this is actually in Danny and Greg's backyard, and this is a couple that wound up buying the other couple's house. Connect the dots. Okay, I think you can tell how much I love this. Is there a hook behind me yet? Do we see Tom? No? Can I have one more minute? Yes? I think that you can see how much I love this. I love coaching. I love providing opportunity for my team and results for my clients. But I would absolutely be doing all of you a disservice if I did not finish with this. Surrender the illusion that success, wealth, or growth can be sustained without discipline. And that one's mine. And we all know, again, it could be you, it could be the person next to you, in this business, we can achieve all of that without discipline. We can get lucky, we can be in the right market, we can be on fire, one thing leads to another, but you can't sustain it without the discipline. So I love my artistry, it's who I am. If somehow it was a choice of colors and I had to pick between my artistry and Josh Rubin's science and discipline, I'd pick his. Wonderfully, fortunately, we don't have to pick. We can cultivate both. Thank you.